while you could point a camera at pretty much anything out there, if you intend to monetize that photo or footage, you do need to have certain rights. So, Dennis, Adobe obviously is a company that's a large company. Lots of people know who you are. You guys want to make sure that when you are selling stock photography and stock video, that nobody's going to get in trouble, right? You don't want the end customer who buys the clip to then get a lawsuit because the model wasn't cleared. And you don't want, as a company, to be selling products that you don't have the rights to. This sounds like it could get kind of complicated, but you guys have done a pretty good job of keeping it simple for everyone, right? Right, so I think there's a lot there. I think this is probably one of the topics for a creative that is a cinematographer where they're not going to be as familiar about this, but yet it's very important. So let me take just a minute to sure. kind of explain. So if I look at you, I take a, a video or a shot of you, ultimately, you're the intellectual rights property holder of your likeness. And I can't go ahead and just shoot you willy-nilly and you know I could get a great shot of you and it can sell a ton. Right. But you might be upset by that. Right? So if I'm on, if I'm standing on a public street corner drinking a cup of coffee, while you might have the rights to photograph me since I'm in a public place, you can't sell that photograph or footage of me without my permission. Exactly. Right. And so that's what we talk about when we talk about a model release. And the same thing for a property release, right? So if I shoot a, a bunch of houses that are kind of nondescript and, and you can't really identify your house out of that, mm -hmm. then that's one thing. But if I do a close-up of the doorway to my house, um, well, oh, that's clearly my house, and therefore you need to get a property release. And that, that holds true for all kinds of different properties. So it really can be a wide range there. It's the people and the location that we have to think about. Right. All right, so let's start a little bit more on the model release side of things. Photographers, video pros can get a model release signed. We actually have some samples of that available for download. You guys provide a sample model release, and this right. can even be done right on your electronic device with a tool like Adobe Capture. If people are getting these signed, they want to make sure that anybody who appears and is recognizable signs it. So if they have a notable tattoo on their hand, well, you might need a model release even if you don't see their face. But if you can recognize them, or more importantly, they can recognize themselves, right. then you need a release form, right? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a couple things. Just to kind of go with the last first, the tattoo can also be intellectual property. So if I was a tattoo artist, okay. I was a well-known one, you might not be able to shoot that because that tattoo is the intellectual property, even though it's on my skin. <laughs> even though I paid I'm not for necessarily, it. yeah, exactly. I'm not necessarily the whole owner for that. So the um, next time you're getting your tattoo, make sure that if you intend to be a model, that you get the tattoo artist to sign a release form. There you Stop go. licensing the there artwork. There you go. There. That's <laughs> hey, why not? So one of the newer things that we have is. Uh, there's a document sign uh, service called Adobe Sign, yeah. which we started to incorporate that into our model releases to make that super, super easy. So I've gone ahead and I've, I've done a shot or, or shoot mm -hmm. with you as a model. Yeah. I can just say, hey, Rich, what's your email? And I shoot you an email um, with that document. It's going to send it to you. You sign off on it, and then it's, it's submitted into the system. So we're trying to make this easier than ever before both for the model, right. for the contributor, and again for the customer, because you make a very good point, right? So Adobe wants to make sure that the marketplace for Adobe stock is the most trusted and most valuable one. So we actually take the time and really are quite strict about making sure that, hey, there's a recognizable face or a recognizable property. It's not a skyline, it's a house or it's a building. We need to make sure that we get the proper releases into all of our assets. Well, let's talk a little bit there about properties, right? So one of the things I think folks struggle with is that there are things you can see every day that actually may be trademarked or copyrighted. A good example, my dad used to live in Seattle and had a beautiful view of the Seattle skyline. Right. Clearly see the Space Needle, clearly see the entire skyline. I can shoot that and make some great images. But if I were to go down to the Seattle Center and just shoot a close-up of the Space Needle, that's no go, right? Because right. that's a trademark building. Right. So the difference is um, with that the the Seattle, you're seeing the cityscape, and obviously the the, the needle is going to stand out. And it's like, oh, well, that's Seattle, right? But right. you're, t it's not a focus. The focus is not the the Space Needle. It's just merely part of the overall landscape of the Seattle skyline. Uh, when you get close up, like you said, that's where well the focus or the centerpiece of the subject matter is the the needle. 
that's when, well, no, you can't do that. You need to get a proper property release. And that'll include things that you can never show. So probably not a lot of stock footage of places like Disneyland because Disney's not going to give you releases for Disneyland. Absolutely. So the, those, are, those are problem areas and can be a litigious situation, right? You don't want to get yourself. Adobe certainly doesn't want to get in that, nor do we want our customers to get in that, into that kind of situation. So for, as a result, we do tend to be very conservative about that. And I did see that you guys actually have on the stock site a list of ongoing list of buildings and properties and things that are known problems that people might miss, but obviously checking for permission before you shoot is a good idea. Now, one other area that I think people get into trouble with a little bit is that we live in a world that's very well branded. Our shoes have logos, our right. clothes can have logos. Right. How do we handle that? You know, obviously the jacket I'm wearing is by a brand and that's in the back, but if there was a giant crest here with a logo, yeah. you probably wouldn't take that shot. Right, so there's, it, it is a fine line and you have to kind of be thoughtful about it. You have to be considering, uh, give some consideration to it. So a couple things I would say, well, let me first start with an example. So uh, this one contributor uh, was upset about how this one shot had gotten rejected. And when I first looked at it, it was two kids, two very handsome kids looking at each other, smiling, right. very photogenic, very well done. Looked great, they were in t-shirts. Um, and I was like, why did we reject this? And they're like, well, the, the shirts are Adidas. And so there was just three, you know, you could see the hint of the a line, stripes. the three stripes. Now you'd be like, yeah, but it's three stripes. But when you recognize and you know that Adidas really enforces their trademarks, right. You, that's why we have to kind of be careful, right? So similarly, I could be shooting what I think is a very innocuous shot. I'm, I'm in the New York area. I could shoot down any street. But the idea is like, well, there's a, there's a Coca-Cola truck down in the distance, and you can recognize that red logo. Well, I can't, I can't do that, right? So as you said, there's Adobe provides a running list. And so uh, Adobe has a whole support site called HelpX. Mm -hmm. Um, if you typed Adobe known legal issues, Adobe stock, you're going to get right to that page. And you'll find some things that are really interesting, some things that make you scratch your head like, why? <laughs> um, but it's great information and really something like if, if you're starting to pick up and you're getting into Adobe stock, it's something to spend a little time on because it's going to be really educational and help you, again, save time, make more useful clips, and make yourself more productive. But using that example of the city street, things that would come to mind for me is, well, I could shoot with shallower depth of field. So sure. that truck might be back there, but it's not clearly in focus and I don't see the brand. Or I might do a time-lapse opportunity there. So while this is a busy shot of Times Square, it's a time-lapse shot and everyone is streaking as they move through, so they're not recognizable. So you could adjust your shooting style absolutely. to accommodate for some of these problem areas, right? Right, absolutely. So again, it's all about the composition of the shot. Think first and foremost, or first and foremost about your customer. Mm -hmm. Think about the aesthetic, and then you're absolutely right. Shallow depth of field can cover up a lot of that stuff. Um, you know, in the example of Times Square, not only are you going to have to worry about shallow depth of field, but making sure like the billboards, if your, your camera's pointing up, you've got to make sure about intellectual property of all those logos. But you could go into a more advanced tool like After Effects, right? And, and mask out, out some of those or areas. Or it out or, or put green, green screen spots there so that people can fill their own. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's all kinds of opportunities there. Okay, so there are ways to get creative here. And if you look through some of the examples on Adobe Stock of what has been accepted, this will help you see how people are doing that. And I think, you know, just to go back to that clothing example, give some thought to wardrobe before you shoot. There are a lot of big box retail stores, the Walmarts, the Targets of the world, that have their own generic house brands that yeah. look good, but don't have giant brand campaigns behind them. Yeah. It's, it's a nice shirt that's plain and simple. Yeah, very simple. Okay, great. Anything else that stands out uh, from a legal point of view of where people get themselves into trouble or have rejections on their media? You know, I think just understanding the model and property releases is really the first uh, rule. Um, people can get frustrated. Early contributors can get frustrated by, why, why didn't I do that? Well, you didn't have the model at least, you know, set in there. So, you know, go into a shoot. If you're shooting people, and again, lifestyle, a lot of content has people. Our search uh, filters have things like excluding people or including people, multiple people, etc. So if you're going to shoot people, make sure that you have done your homework, make sure you know that you have the releases, whether it's a paperwork, paper copy, or you can use the Adobe Sign App.
And you can go back and reach out to people after a shoot and still have them Absolutely, them absolutely, you can do that. And then you can upload, you could go ahead and clip the image or clip the clip, uh, edit the clip, and upload it to Adobe Stock and just have it waiting uh, until you get that model release. And the other thing is, is that, you know, you don't have to do a model release for every clip, right? So right. if I, we did a whole shoot together, we were shooting each other, I just need one model rele release for Rich, Rich just needs one model release for sure. Dennis. And we just attach that. And that release that you're having people do, while it's needed for Adobe Stock, it does give the photographer or the videographer additional rights to use this clip in other ways, right? Yeah. They can, this is a good thing to have across the board. Right, absolutely. Having the, the release for yourself, if you're a professional photographer, videographer, cinematographer, it's absolutely good stuff for you to have. It's gonna cover your rear end in a lot of scenarios. Well, now that you understand what it takes to have a clip that's ready to license and that's going to meet the technical specs, it's important to actually create video that can be found. Adobe Stock relies upon a search engine and you have a tremendous amount of influence on how discoverable your clips are.